to what the crap is going on. It's actual garbage here. And uh, today I have a really spicy creativity build for you. Uh, I was looking through the MTGO challenge top eights and uh, I, s I saw this gem. So what is different about this deck? Um, first off, it pr premieres two new cards. One of which is this Invasion of Ergamon. This is a, a card that I guess I just completely overpassed while looking at the spoilers. You know, we're inundated with so many spoilers these days that I kind of just pass over some innocuous looking ones. But I think this this card probably plays pretty good in these Persist style creativity decks. Um, so what does it do? When it enters the battlefield, you create a treasure token, then you discard a card. If you do, draw a card. So this card is kind of does two things that this deck is looking for, right? It uh, dishes creativity or whatever your creativity target might be. Uh, and it makes a treasure, so it can ditch your Archon and give you a target for your creativity. Uh, something else that it does is it's the new one of the new battle cards, so... If you happen to do 5 damage to it, you get this 3-4 that lets you discard a land and search for either another land or another battle. So it can go get you a Dwarven Mine, it can go get you a Beseju, or in weird games where you've been slaughtered games, uh, stone-brained or something like that, it kind of gives you this weird angle between Fable the Mirror Breaker and uh, this card where you can kind of like grind your opponent out and beat them in like a fair game. Uh... I played this deck through a league before recording, and uh, I was actually fairly impressed with this card. I'm not sure if this is like an auto-include staple into the archetype now, but I was uh, fairly impressed. Uh, it also plays the new Ren and Realm Breaker. This card, I'm not as sold on. Uh, first off, this list only plays two. And it just didn't really come up a lot. But I kind of see why the person who created this deck included it. It is pretty sweet. Like, you get to untap one of your lands and it becomes a 3-3 hexproof. So it's, it's kind of another way to play around removal spells for your creativity target. You know, you make the 3-3 and then you creativity it and uh, it's hexproof. So... They just don't get to target it with traditional removal. Removal that need like an instant speed edict to interact with this effect. Uh, everything else is pretty stuck. I have a, a few questions about kind of the numbers. For example, it plays the full four bitter reunions and three of the new invasion of Ergamon. That seems like an awful lot to me, uh, considering this deck only plays three persist. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to run it as is again. Uh, I have not played enough games with it to, to know if, if that is right or not. Uh, as far as the sideboard is concerned, we have a lot of the usual su suspects. Beseju, just generally good. We have uh, Emrakul, you know, good against Mill. Secondary backup creativity target when you're playing against Necromantia or s Slaughter Games or Surgical or whatever. Nature's Claim, generically good. Turn to Earth is, you know, it's always fine. You find places for it. Uh, Veil of Summer, Counter Spells, Discard, it's good. Hitasugu, mostly for Hammer. Brotherhood's in, mostly for Hammer. Uh, Strike It Rich, uh, Strike It Rich is good. You know, we used to play the Abundant Growth in these Creativity decks, but I, I think unless you're playing a lot of Teferis, this Strike It Rich card is just better uh, you know you can top deck it off of a blood moon and it kind of has some sneaky applications where if you're playing in a really linear matchup for example burn uh, maybe like amulet titan you get to just kind of turn one throw this out there and speed you up a turn something that abundant growth can't do abundant growth only plays good against blood moon and can kind of grind out if you're playing a bunch of the fairies but this list not playing into fairies so strike it rich is just better and then Necromantia for combo decks. Uh, I played it through one league, and I went 4-1. Uh, decks seem pretty strong. I really like these creativity decks, especially the three-color versions like Teamer or Jund. Um, so we're going to run it through a league and see how we do.
I'll see you in round one. All right, guys, welcome to round one. We have a two lander on the draw. Um, what do I think about this hand? I think I'm gonna keep it. I'm on the draw. I got a bunch of removal spells. I got a bit bitter reunion. Um, if we're playing against a deck that has no creatures, this hand sucks. But if we're playing against a lot of creatures, this hand is probably good as long as we draw lands. So I think I am going to keep it. All right, we got a Bloodstained Mire. Okay, a Traverse the Uzenwald. We got some kind of a deck that I am not 100% sure I know yet. Opponent plays a Wooded Foothills, cracks it. I'm pretty curious to see what our opponent, some kind of Jund, Jund deck. Is this just Traverse Jund? Kind of looks like it. So I got to decide if I want to Fatal Push on the end step or just get my Triome. Um... I got two bitter reunions, so I think I want to make sure I hit my third land drop, so I want to cast it on my turn. So we'll go ahead and fetch shock. Don't need green yet. All right, perfect. So I might take a turn off. Now that I have my third land, I might just get my Triome and Inquisition this turn. Sometimes these Jun mid-range decks don't have a lot of threats. Oh, a Yargle. What is our opponent doing? I guess he's trying to fling, <laughs> fling this at us, kind of looks like. So Traverse still only gets a land, so I'm going to take the Shadow. Flare land, pass the turn. So this should be an okay matchup. Not 100% sure what they're doing uh, yet, but I assume they're trying to pitch a fatty, fatty creature at us. Okay. So I think I'm just going to get a mountain. And we will bolt this guy now, try to be mana efficient. I do need to try to get my green mana just in case I... Draw a Ren and Six. Perfect. So we'll ditch this. All right. Do I want to get the Traverse to Uzenwald? I think the answer is probably no. I think I'll just wait. Well. Yeah, I'll just wait. We can ditch uh, this Inquisition to our Bitter Reunion, if that's what we want to do. Let's see, what do they lose here? I think they got rid of one of these swamps. Okay. Let me close this for you guys. Kind of occupying most of the play space here. They ditch a Yargle. This is not like an enchantment or something, right? Nope, just legendary creature. Okay. I can probably remember that. Let's 
So we will go ahead and get our triome. Creativity. Okay. So I'm going to Inquisition before I decide to do anything. Because we may not need this bolt. Which we do not. Alright. So we will cast this. Hopefully we just hit our land uh, naturally here. We did not. Okay. Yeah, really don't want to die to this Yargle, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, no. They drew an Inquisition. At least we're not getting Yargled. I guess they could go land, and then next turn they can, you know, play Yargle plus activate Reflections. It's not that great for us. Oh, okay. Okay. So, this can, no, I think I'm just going to ditch this Inquisition here. Oh, perfect. That is perfect. Okay, so we arc on them. They lose their Yargle. They lose their Reflections. Okay. That was enough. So we're against some sort of Yargle fling deck. What do we want against that? So we're definitely playing against Discard, so we'll play some Veil of Summers. And I don't really know exactly what we're up against, so I'm thinking to not sideboard over sideboard here. Um, so what do I want to cut then? I want to keep my fair cards in. Uh, you know, I never found a target for Bolt, but I assume it's good. Maybe it's not. I mean, they had Death Shadow Yargle. I don't know if, if they're playing anything small enough for that to hit. Hmm. So, I think I'm just going to cut a few things, right? Like, we got a bunch of that. We'll cut one of those. Um, Fatal Push gets the... Death Shadow. And I'll cut another Bolt. I didn't see any targets for Bolt. Feels kind of weird against a Jun deck, but I don't know how focused they are on getting this whatever Yargle combo off. Oh, no, they had the they have Fable. Ooh, that might have been a bad side out. It's all right. We can uh, change it if there's a game three. Ooh, look at that hand. Okay, I'm tempted to keep this one. Ah, Leyline of the Void. So we'll definitely be bringing in our Beseju and our Nature's Claims. At the very least, our Nature's Claims. For game three, if there is one. Also turns off our Ren and Sixes, so we'll probably trim one of those as well. Oh, that was aggressive. Okay. So... I'm just going to get my Triome. I only have one Fatal Push, so I want to see what's going on in the hand over there before I use it.
Oh, what is this? <laughs> All right. Cragwick. Crema crematory. Cremator. Enters the battlefield. Discard a card at random. If you discard a creature card, deals. Okay, so that's that's how they're fleeing. Okay. Pretty safe to just push this guy now. He's kind of got less going on than me in a way. Perfect. That was a really good draw. Just going to get a mountain. Not that it matters. If he uh, flings a death shadow at me, I die anyways. This will let us get rid of our persists. Hopefully we draw creativity. Pretty often that's what it comes down to when you play these uh, Jun creativity decks. You need to just draw your thing. You're not as interactive as the four and five color versions of this deck. Giant. Let's see if we die. I kind of hope we do. Be awesome. Another Tarmogoyf. Okay. So now we decide what we discard. For an instant in the yard. I think we probably discard Dwarven Mine Persist. The Persist is dead. And we're going to get an attack off this Goblin Shaman. So we will have a treasure for creativity. Uh, I want to keep the bolt because if they block my Shaman, I would like to bolt the Tarmogoyf. Uh, he shouldn't be growing off this. Yes, that is correct. Okay. We will do that. And we have an Archon. Okay. So we will just bolt this guy. And, uh... Maybe we get enough uh, lands to cast this Archon. That's the plan. So this card discards at random. I wonder if he's got a way to control the cards he discards. Or is he just trying to get Hellbent? So the Yargol or the Death Shadow is the last card in hand. Interesting. Gonna go get a Dwarven mine, start attacking. Ooh. That was not the greatest draw in our deck. Got him. Nice. So I'm just going to attack with my reflections. I don't really have anything to copy. Uh, I got the fetch land back. So if they have some kind of weird haster, I can block with a door if I want. Thought it was cremator time. All right, that's a good draw. Yeah, the 
damage this. Oh, okay. So, I got two. I think I'm tempted to just use one. So, I'll attack first. Hopefully, uh, I'm not blowing myself out into an aura bar. That's the only thing that really punishes this. It's better to do it next turn if uh, they have Orvar. So what'd they discard? Veil of Summer. Okay. So if they draw Death Shadow here, they kill me. If they draw Yargle, they kill me. Okay. Did they draw it? <laughs> no way. Don't do it, man. Oh, no. Oh, uh, what was it? It was the Yargle. Oh, so brutal. Okay. So we can bring in Nature's Claim. <laughs> Surely this deck is not combo -y enough to bring in Necromantia. Surely not. Hmm. So, I think the Inquisition's bad. It doesn't hit the cards I need it to. So I'm citing those out. At least a few of them. Um, I'm going to bring the bolts back in. Bringing this Besaju, which means we have to cut one card. Um, yeah, we will do it like that. Okay, what do we got here? Okay. So, this hand is kind of sketchy. It's in theory, a one lander, but I have fetch land plus two lands plus Rin, and I have Veil of Summer on the play. So, in theory, I might not be able to play this Rin in six until turn three, but that'll be the turn that I need it the most, so I'm, I'm going to keep it. Hopefully, my opponent just. Okay. That uh, ruins that plan. But I still have Bitter Reunion. I can ditch some of this crap. And maybe this uh, Ren and Realm Breaker kind of gets them. Yeah, they even cited in their own Veil of Summer. So citing out my Inquisitions are good. It doesn't get any other st stuff. And uh, opens me up to get blown out by Veil of Summer. Suppose they can still veil my Archon, but that's fine. All right. Land? Ooh, I was not specific enough. Let's see. I was about to say Tarmogoyf could be pretty bad for me right now. Blood Crypt. I wish I could cast my Rin in Realm Breaker here. Um, I'll just cast this. Bitter Reunion. I think I actually want to hold on to my Archon. Um, discarding it doesn't do much. And I think I'm going to discard my Rin in 6 for now. No, I don't think I need this mine. No, I'll keep the mine. Yeah, we'll keep the mine. All right, that's that's perfect. Um, almost passed for my turn. That would have been bad. 
So if they tap out this turn, I can go for a creativity if I want. If they leave mana open, I will probably just cast Fable the Mirror Breaker. Alright, they're missing lands. I imagine that is extremely good for me. Yeah, we'll we'll bluff Veil of Summer. That's fine. Here's a here's a question. Should I go for a haste this turn? I could get the token from Shaman and that would be a better creativity target. But they're holding open mana, so I think I will just pass. Surely they have a removal spell for my Shaman. They do. Let's see if they find their lands. They do find a land. They have a fable of their own. So they are tapping out for this. Okay. So, it seems pretty weird, but I am going to just ditch one of these. Okay, uh, that was not great. Yeah, I I'm going to ditch just one. Uh, I don't want to dig too deep, draw more Archons, and then have ditched all of my Archons. Sometimes, sometimes you just got to cast them. I'm going to need to get a Stomping Ground for my Ren and Realm Breaker. And I will cast my Creativity. You know, it's worth noting that I, I slightly misplayed here. Uh, I shouldn't have just fetched the stomping grounds. I should have uh, left it as a fetch land and waited for the Archon trigger to resolve. If you do it that way, you can play around an Orvar uh, by going to get a Dwarven Mine. Then I can use that to haste to get rid of the, the Orvar. But so small sequencing mistake, but unpunished. Okay. And they pack it in. GG opponent. And uh, I'll see you in round two. All right, guys. Welcome to round two. We are on the draw again with another two lander we have a couple fables we got a creativity we got a persist we got an inquisition uh you know i'm gonna keep it i got lands and spells i do need a i do need one more land uh and this hand does kind of just die to ragavan but sometimes that just happens Yep, and there's the Ragavan. Awesome. Top deck bolt. Mm. Well, hopefully their hand sucks. Hopefully it was just a turn one Ragavan. Okay, their hand does not suck. Um, I want to take the expressive. But I think I'm gonna take the Chandler. I uh, I just want to buy myself as much time as possible. So I'm gonna take that. And uh, hopefully this Ragavan doesn't connect too many times. Um, hopefully I draw an answer, like uh, Ren and Six. <laughs> oh. God. 
They didn't have a fetch land, did they? No, they had an island. So the Renin Six isn't necessarily good. Although, kind of strange that they didn't... I don't know. I, I think if I were them, I would have been somewhat tempted to... Uh, oh, that was a smart play. I'd have been somewhat tempted to uh, just expressive without making my land drop, but that uh that worked out for them, so... You know, they didn't show me a lightning bolt, so maybe my creativity gets there. Like, I could go Fable, and if they don't, you know, answer it, they don't connect with Ragavan. If they do answer it, I can just try to jam my creativity, and that might, uh... That might work. But I don't really feel like I have the option to just do nothing. Might just be one of those games where I just have to try, make it happen. Um, the Ragavan for sure... It should get slowed down here soon. I have two fetch lands. If I draw another one, um, I can just block it with a dwarf token. See if they put a card in the graveyard or if they top one. Okay. Oh, they, they graveyarded a bolt. Hmm find that to be suspicious. Oh, I thought we were in the end step. No, that's all right. Get some F6 value then. All right. So we're in a spot. We can bolt the Ragavan or we can just play Fable. We've already been hit by the Ragavan so many times. I kind of just want to play Fable, use all my mana, and then next turn we can decide if we want to go for it. Like, uh, you know, we may just play another Fable. Then we'll have Bolt plus Fable token plus Dwarf um, to kind of stem the bleeding here. Like, I don't have too long, but there's like a world where... I stop the Ragavan, and I can bolt the Dragon Rage Chandler instead, and I may get like an opportunity where I can creativity two targets, or I just draw Archon and I get to lead with Persist and then have Bolt open as well. All options. Although they're not going to give us terribly too long. Uh, they are attacking for three. And they likely have a counter spell as well. Okay, so kind of what we were talking about. Archon is the best draw here, not even close. Persist. Oh, they can persist a Chandler back if they want. I doubt it. They're gonna. If they don't, they have counter spell. Or they could have spell pierce if they want. If they want to persist their Chandler back. I don't know if that's necessarily worth it. Well, I gotta go for something. So I think I might need to have an Archon here. Um, 
I'm going to go for it regardless. But I need to play around Spell Pierce. It's the only thing I can play around. I don't have time for Fable. And I'm going to ditch the Bloodstained Mire, I believe. Inquisition. Hmm. Well, I think I just got to try to go for it. See what happens. Okay, they got me. Kept the hand that we identified as losing to a turn one Ragavan and lost to turn one Ragavan. That's why the card is good. So, what do we want? Veil of Summer. And Strike It Rich. In case they have a bunch of Blood Moons. I think all of my fair cards are good. Maybe not this Rin and... Maybe not the Rin. do I not want? Let's see. Rin, if we were on the draw, we could trim a Rin in six, but it's just too insane on the play. Uh, I think it's got to be some, some number of these three drops. I think this is just the weakest. Doesn't play around... Well, it does play around Blood Moon. It does play around Blood Moon. That's interesting. The uh, lands you control tapping for at one man of any color. I believe if if you have this in play and then they play a Blood Moon, I, th I think it gets around it. I would have to check on that one. Um, I think I'm going to cut some bitter reunions. I just have to be all the bitter reunions. Yeah, I'm definitely going to cut these rins. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, I just turned to earth. I did not mean to sideboard that in. Maybe we don't need all of these. No, 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 no. We're, we're keeping that. You know, I think this is, I think this is okay. It, it, it's probably correct to leave in some number of bitter reunions because it's just a stronger card. But I just want to play with the new card. So that is the decision-making process. I'm going to keep this hand. I got a bunch of Inquisitions. I got a Creativity. I can kill a Ragavan, so. It is good. I'm going to go to our Triome. I'm actually going to slow roll these Inquisitions, unless I draw a Fable here, um, which I did not. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to just wait. I don't see any real reason to, to go for it right now. The longer you wait, the more information you get. Alright, so I'm going to cast my Inquisition now, see what they got. Uh, honestly, not a lot. What do I take here? Probably just to consider. Yeah. We'll 
like to consider. Their hand kind of sucks. We're going to shock this in. And we're going to cast our Bitter Reunion. And I might regret this, but I'm going to get rid of this Bolt. Yep, instantly regret it. They may just slam here. Nope, they chose not to slam. Now if they choose to slam, if they don't choose to slam, I'll be extremely surprised. Uh, we should be in really good shape here. This is like pretty textbook how you kind of take apart this deck. Also doesn't hurt that their hand kind of sucks. Okay. So, my thought process is here is to, I can play around Spell Pierce, which they probably don't have. I can play around, can't really play around Counter Spell. I think what I'm going to do so I'm going to lead on this Ren and Six. Oh, that is not Ren and Six. That's fine. Ren and Six can be bait for a Spell Pierce. We'll just say that that is what we did. So we, we'll play, run it into a potential Spell Pierce. They don't know about our creativity, so they may just slam it on a Ren and Six if I play it. We don't need this. Oh. Yes, we will. We will go for that. Um, we can creativity next turn if they drew a counter spell. Invasive surgery. Okay. They did indeed draw the counter spell. Luckily, they didn't have uh, delirium. Would have been pretty bad for me. Hopefully, they don't hit another counter spell off this expressive iteration. Also, pretty bad for me. Uh, but that is why this is one of the best decks in the format. Just really good at finding its answers. Kind of hope to draw land. I can't afford to play around Spell Pierce. So I'm just going to uh, try to go for two targets if I can. What's he deciding on? Main phase to Merc Tide. Okay. Got the land. So here's my options. I can play around Spell Pierce by 
going for creativity on one of my two creatures. But that gets blown out by Lightning Bolt. Or I can creativity targeting my treasure and my dwarf token. Um, I do think I want to do X2. My other option is X1 uh, target my treasure and uh, then haste. Or X1 targeting my dwarf, haste, then keeks happens. But I just, I don't think I get to play around Bolt. Like, I gotta play around Bolt. So, that's what I'm gonna do. I could probably attack first, but not going to. Let's see if they get us. Okay. That's chat. That's not actually game log. Put a mystical dispute in the graveyard, okay? Do you have it? Usually a pause means they don't have it. Either that or they're savagely slow rolling me. Nice. Ooh, that was close. Merktide's a scary card. So, do we want to change anything? Um, not really. Something something worth mentioning is I I was not paying attention on if they were they were actively fetching for Blood Moon or not. I assume it's it's in their deck, um, but you never know. Some people just don't play it or don't fetch like they have it. So I think it's possible a Ren and Six can come out on the draw. If I wanted to do that. Hmm. I might just run it back. Yeah, I think I'm gonna run it back. I don't I don't know if this card is is worth it. Just doesn't seem like it. Yeah. Not in this matchup. I think it's a little too. Just doesn't do enough in this matchup. Like it. It's kind of cool. I mean, I, I I was considering the hex proof. Like if the hex proof part is worth it. If I can manage to get it re to resolve. You know, that's a nice hex proof target for my creativity, but. Like I said, mostly worried about counter spells. Okay. The question is, is do I want to bolt this now? So they don't get a trigger if they cast something. And I think I'm not I'm not going to bolt it. If they didn't have a bobble, then uh, oh they did have the bobble. Interesting. Or they just drew it. They don't really have a lot of two mana proactive plays they can make. And uh, I'd rather hit a shredder if that's what they have. Good old fashioned fetch shock. So I'm gonna get a mountain. 
I'm gonna bolt this thing. And we get to see one of the uh, kind of cool parts about this card is in Blood Moon matchups, which obviously he doesn't have. He went and got another Steam Vents. You can uh, play this, and it gives you a treasure. So it's kind of like having an extra Abundant Growth. Or a, a Strike It Rich. It's not like Abundant Growth at all, I suppose, but... It's like having a main deck strike it rich. You can just kind of proactively play it out there and get your treasure. Did I just miss a land drop? That has to be good for me. It's either uh, good for me or it's bad for me. Um, sometimes... Sometimes them missing lands, but being on like a couple lands is, uh, that can be pretty bad for me sometimes. Like, they are going to have a lot of spells in their hand. I'm about to find out what those spells are. So this gets creatures and planeswalkers. I can play around all this stuff. I'm just going to take the expressive, try to keep them off their lands and card advantage. Like, obviously I'm flooding out really hard here, but, uh... If I can flip this invasion, that'll really help. We'll close this for you guys, so we've got more play space. So they have Flusterstorm, Spell Pierce, Subtlety. So if I play my land, I'm actually just going to go get a Dwarven Mine, too. Um... Uh, Yeah, so I should be able to force this through with my Veil of Summer. Yep. So we'll do that. Persist. So he's got to use both, and I can hit his Bluster Storm with the Veil of Summer. So we'll pay for this one. Do this. So we will let the storm trigger resolve. Okay. And then we will cast Veil of Summer. And that is apparently it for him. I mean, he could have unholy heated it, so I don't exactly know why he conceded so early. Um, obviously, it's not good for him, but it's not like our opponent is just outright dead. I mean, they could just draw Murktide and hit me twice, so felt like an early concession, but I'll take it. I will see you in round two. All right, guys, we are 2-0 in round three. And we are on the play this time. What do we got? A one lander? Can't keep that. Two lander with double fable, bitter reunion. What do we think about this one? Um, I think I'm going to keep it. Question is, is do we need double persist or would we rather have double fable? And I would say in most matchups, probably double fable. Just in the dark. Maybe if I knew I was playing against a spell pierce deck, I would keep double persist. But, you know, we're going to see a lot of our decks, so uh, we can find another payoff. Gemstone Caverns. <laughs> okay. I guess this is like Rhinos. Usually that's what that means. What'd they discard? Oslik. Oh, no. This is a... Uh, this is a uh, Hardened Scales deck. So this is one of the new cards they got. 
So what does this do? If one or more 1-1 one -one counters would be put on an artifact or creature you control, that many 1-1 one -one counters plus one, and you can tap it to put 1-1 one -one counters on things. Okay. I'm going to be honest. I run into this deck so rarely, I don't know if I have a favorable matchup or not. Um, I imagine they have some really quick Arcbound Ravenger kills that are too fast for this deck to deal with if it doesn't have disruption. But... I would say generally this is probably a decent matchup, but I, I say that purely off of <laughs> how I feel. I, I don't necessarily have a good reason why I think that. So I suppose we'll find out. You know, I played against this deck uh, in a previous league. I, I played through one league before recording the video. And uh, I played against this deck once, and then just kind of in a casual game where I was playing, uh, I don't know, some other deck through another league, I ran into this deck. And I, I just, in the in this week alone, I've run into this deck like three times, and I never run into this deck. So I wonder if this is just a uh, popular deck right now. So we're going to run out our Fable here. What do we want? A stomping ground? No, we probably want Blood Crypt. Probably should have upped my Rin first. I would like to draw... I would like to draw my Archon. They kind of have a slow start. So maybe they're on a kind of a grindier draw. Or maybe this is just not what I think it is. I mean I mean it's hardened scales, right? For sure. Okay. Okay. That's the good good thing about this persist build is that, you know, walking ballista would normally be a pretty hard card to deal with. So we have our Rin. See, this is what I'm talking about. Like, this does not seem, like, I just don't know. It just doesn't seem to come up. Like, I, I don't even think I'm going to keep this card. I'm just going to discard it. So I don't want this. And, well, you know, in theory, I could just ditch two lands and keep the Rin. I have the Rin in six, so I can just pick up my lands. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Okay. Hmm. So we've got an interesting choice to make here. We can creativity now. But it probably just eats an Ink Moth Nexus. Um, I don't know if we care about that, though. Like, we could just take a hit or chump block. So, I think that's what I'm going to do. They got no cards in hand. Yeah. That seems pretty reasonable to me. Or I could just wait. What punishes me? An Arcbound Ravenger? I don't even think that punishes me. Huh. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go for it now. That seems fine to me. It gets the automaton. I'm even happier. Okay, it's just backbreaking apparently. So, I imagine Brotherhood's end is extremely good in this matchup. Uh, is Hitasugu good against this deck? 
I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it for sure. Nature's Claim has to be pretty good as well. And Beseju has to be pretty good as well. What do we not like? I'm going to cut this card. It's definitely too slow. I think I'm also going to cut one Fable for sure. I'm going to cut one Bitter Reunion because I just don't think we need seven of that card. And I wonder if I should cut Inquisition. And I think I might. Like, they're kind of a combo deck, so it's like like taking pieces out of their hand is kind of good, but it's all going to come down pretty fast. Yeah, I got all this stuff, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to cut these. The reason why I want to do that is I actually want to bring in the Strike It Rich. Um, it's kind of what I was talking about. In a, against a super linear deck, the Strike It Rich can speed you up by a turn. What do we have here? Um, man, I'm just always so tempted to keep every hand. I, I I don't think this is good. I don't think this is good hand. So we got like really strong hate cards in our deck. So I'm just gonna try to draw one of those. All right. I think this hand is probably worth trying to keep. I'm just going to ditch a creativity and just hope to spike a land. If I spike a land, I have the bitter reunion, so I can, you know, get rid of some cards to try to, uh, to, to try to hit lands, right? Um, I just, I think Hitasugu is going to be good here. I have the strike it rich, so... I can, at the very least, Bitter Reunion next turn. And if I hit a third land, um, I can cast this hit a, the Hitasugu. So there's a lot to like about this hand. I don't like that. Okay. Okay. That's, not, that's definitely not good for us, for sure. That is going to do us a lot of damage. So I can Fatal Push it now, and I'll lose my treasure. Is that okay to do, though? Is that okay to do? Because this thing's going to get pretty massive. No, it's not okay to do because of the Welding Jar. That's that's pretty crappy. Okay. So I'm gonna fetch out a mountain. Or do I need to get a stomping ground? I got a lot of green cards in my deck right now. Yeah, I think I will. Um I think I'm just in probably bad shape, but this will get rid of the hardened scales and the welding jar. And if I naturally draw a land next turn, I can try to fatal push the automaton. What does this card do? Oh, it's a Pindle Haven. Okay. Oof. Oof. Hopefully there's no Ravager here. That would be terrible for me. Land is excellent. No. I will try to draw a land, though. I think I'm ditching the Fable here. I'm just not going to have time for it. That's why I like to trim one in matchups like this. I feel like people leave them in it too often. Okay. Okay. I mean, the Paseju kind of sucks. Um, I'm still going to need another land for... Uh, 
my creativity, a fetch land specifically even. Let's see what they get. Oh, I should have fetched in response. They could have got a pivot yield there. That would have been really bad for me. I wonder if I don't fetch and just take. Yeah, I'm not going to fetch, I don't think. Because if I just draw a regular ass mountain here, uh, I can I can go for the creativity. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay. So I don't necessarily have to go for it here. Um, necessarily have to go for it here, but I think I will. I think I will. Like, I don't know what I can got. I don't know what I'm supposed to be scared of. Maybe I'm supposed to be scared of Orvar. Okay, well, pff, that answer that, that question. Alright, I will see you guys in round four. Hello and welcome to round four of our modern league. We are on the draw with two lands, two persist, an archon, and a Ren and Realm Breaker. What is this? Our opponent is doing something. Serum Powder. Okay, so this is that Mystic Forge prison deck. We have a Basaju. Our hand is risky. We're on the draw. We have a Basaju though. But we might have to play it as a land. Huh. Potentially have a quick combo. You know, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to risk it. Like, this could definitely get punished. But, you know, we have seven, you know, bitter reunion effects in our deck. So, it could be worth it. Could be worth it. Chalice on one, okay. I don't think that's actually very good against us. I really don't want to play this Paseju. Um, I suppose I will if I have to. Sky. Okay, so the Paseju, uh, I don't think matters as much. I'm surprised they didn't crack their map there. Like they just miss a land drop. Like I don't, I don't totally understand what would make them want to miss their land drop. Like why would they do that? Like, they need four mana, right? Like, they're really far away from Tron. They need two pieces. That's interesting. Okay, we're definitely discarding one of these guys and our Archon. 
next slide. Do we need to worry about warping whale? No, that costs two mana. I don't think there's anything to worry about. don't think there's anything to worry about. So I'm just going to play my guy here. You know, I shocked this in thinking I might use this bolt, but we're under chalice, so. Kind of just lost life for no reason. That's okay. I might just play this Rin and Realm Breaker. Okay. Um, or alternatively, I could cast Boseju or channel it right now to hit the tower. I wonder if that gives them colored mana. And do they care about colored mana? It kind of looks like they might not. Yeah, I'm just going to channel this on the off chance that they care about... Uh, that they just draw into Tron. Okay, so they're, they're a blue Tron deck. Okay, weird. Yeah, we've... We've played uh, against some weird decks in uh, this league for sure. I mean, that's that's kind of the strength of this this Jun deck. Is it? It definitely, unlike the four or five color deck, that's kind of more meta specific. It definitely beats up on like weirder strategies because it's just more linear. So I assume this Brotherhood's end is good. Um, I doubt this is, I would imagine this is nature's claim. I don't know if Necromantia is good. I doubt it. Um, I think Emrakul might be good. Uh, I imagine, I seen the, the four mana Karn, so they probably have stone brain. And... I'm going to ditch these bolts and a fatal push. Uh, I think I'm also going to cut these Ren and Realm Breakers. They just haven't seemed very good. I'm sure there's a matchup for them somewhere. Do I want to strike it rich? No. Necromantia? I don't think so. I could get Mystic Forge. I think the plan is to just be faster. I kind of wonder if I need Veil of Summer. But I'm just going to run it as is. My kind of rule, my, my rule is really to just sideboard less against these weirdo decks until you know exactly what they're doing. So I just know I, I probably don't want any removal. Okay, I got the Basajo again, so I'm going to keep. Like, uh, if I draw Ren and Six, you know, I might be able to Ren and Six Basajo lock them. Could be good. Alright, looks like they've Serum Powdered a couple times. Weird that they left in Chalice of the Void, no? Maybe they just have a lack of cards that's good against us. Oh, they have a bunch of Pithing Needles as well. Okay. Yep, there's the Ren and Six. Nice. So, I don't have Overgrown Tomb, and I don't have green mana, so I unfortunately think I have to just pass here. Um... And I can get my uh, <coughs> my triumph. Yep, 
Yeah, this hand would definitely be a lot better uh, on the draw, I think. Because as is, I kind of have to presage you them or they're going to have turn three Tron. So I'll let this resolve and see what they get. A mine. Okay. I'm going to hit the tower and hope they just don't have another tower in their hand. Next turn, we can play Ren and Six, pick up a fetch land and Inquisition. See what that does for us. Oh, Urza Saga. Okay. Snaring Bridge. That's fine. Oh, we got a Nature's Claim. So we will. Ren and Six. Nature's Claim was an extremely good draw. Now, this is kind of risky. If they have a way to deal with my Ren and Six, I don't actually have access to uh, my Viseju again. But, I mean, I can't just not hit my land drop here. So, we're going to do it like this. I think this is slight, slightly better. And if we ever hit a natural land drop, we can use some of our looters to loot the land away and then pick up the land to turn it into real cards since we got infinite land drops with uh, Ren and Six. Okay. They are going for Tron again. So how do we want to play this out? First off, we're definitely picking up Viseju this turn, for sure. The real question is, is do we want to cast one of our looters, or do we want to just Inquisition? And I think the answer is that we want to cast Inquisition. Uh, we're kind of running out of time, and they're going to end up being dead. And I just want to see what I'm, I'm working against. Like, it could just be a bunch of fatties that... Oh, ooh, Warping Whale. That's a good one. Okay. So they have Mystic Forge plus Karn the Great Creator. Okay. Um, interesting. So how do we play around this? can't keep the Karn from coming into play. Like, they're going to get a land. They're going to get another island. Uh, so, we can at least keep them from getting Tron. So, I think we do that. And next turn, we bid a reunion away our Inquisition. And hopefully, we find a way to answer the Karn. I mean, we really realistically can't even answer the Karn, uh, but I guess if we draw our, oh, did they, they not have a land there? They didn't get a land. Do they have just one island? Oh, they're in trouble. trouble and they drew a map for their turn well let's uh let's keep doing that I wonder if they just misclicked Oh, wow. Okay, so... We will get this going. 
we're going to discard this Inquisition. We know that we're unlikely to get anything with that. They'll just cast whatever. They'll just cast whatever they draw. We're going to actually attack this battle because we just we're doing one a turn, you know, it's, it just doesn't really matter. Might as well get some off that. Dwarf beats on. Okay, that's good. Wow. Oh, stupid. Oh, well. Just moto stuff. All right, this is probably the last Dwarven mine I'll get. Um, I just want to keep the last one in my deck in case, in case something weird happens, I suppose. I will stop besaging them when they stop having lands to besage you. Okay, sweet. Well, still undefeated. I will see you in the next round. All right. Welcome to round number five. We are on the play, and we are going to play for a trophy. So let's see what we get. Can't keep a one-lander. And this hand is... I think it's good. We'll just uh, throw one Archon away. And we will try to go get a Triumph. Oh, okay. Oh, that's pretty good. What do we want to do? It's tough stuff. I'm going to play this. And, uh... I think I'm going to pass. My reason is, is if they, if they play a bounce land here... I can besage it in response. Or I can get the Vigor right now. Would it be better to get the Amulet or the Bounce Land? Okay, I'm, I'm just going to get the Amulet right now. Although I will be open to the hitting Bounce Lands later plan. Okay, they don't even have a Bounce Land. Okay, so I think they're trying to go for a, uh, yeah, they're going for the guy who, uh, hmm. what is it, the uh, three mana, two, four enchantment creature that turns all their lands into mountains? That's probably in their hand. They're not going to tighten me next turn. I'm questioning whether I need to get my Beseju back or if I need to get a Bloodstained Mire. I think I'm just going to get this. Let's see what they get. Yep, there it is, the Dryad. Okay. Okay. 
kind of want to fetch land. Can't get one though. Yeah, this is really tough. So they have access to Titan next turn, pretty much no matter what. Uh, unless I blow up one of these lands, then they'll have two, three, four, five. Yeah, they'll, they'll have it no matter what. So Titan might be inbound no matter what. So what's the best I can do here? I'm going to start by discarding my Archon. Okay. We will make our token. we got to kill this. I think we pretty much just die if they get to keep that. They're out of basic lands, I guess. And I will pick this back up. I can do it twice next turn if by some miracle they don't have uh, Primeval Titan. Or can I do it twice? Because if I pick up a fetch land, it would cost me two. Play Ren. Play my land. No, I can only do it once. can just look at what's in their hand. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that, I suppose. What else am I doing? Oh, I, I did not know what I'm playing against. Two, oh no. Dr dramatic entrance. Man, we are playing against the weirdest stuff. Okay. Yeah, I'm just not quite sure if we can beat this hand. Yeah. I wonder if they have a way to get the attracts into play. Surely they do. No, they can't make white mana yet. Oh, they bogged me. Oh, I should have thought of that. I should have. I should have slow rolled my uh. Beseju there. That was really bad. Yeah, that was a, that was a huge mistake. Okay, so that packs for Dryad. Yeah, I think that just kills me. Um, they just go get two more Valakuts. They're all mountains. I'll um I'll make them have the the Valakuts in their deck, but I assume they are. Yeah, I'm not sure if we could have won that game. Uh, even if I I I played correctly, but that's probably still not an, an excuse to to play bad. Um. Yeah, their hand was just really really good. I think. So. Necromentia is probably fine. I think Strike It Rich is actually good. Or could be good. We'll see how many cards we have to take out. Um, Nature's Claim is obviously good. And Beseju is good. This card, way too slow. Uh, I do not like the Lightning Bolts. And I do not like the Fatal Push. They just don't kill anything. And I think I need to cut this just one expensive card you know it could be the renin six 
No, 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 no. I want the Windows X. Yeah, this is fine. On the play. And our hand is interesting. So we have, we can turn one strike it rich into Ren and Six to hit our lands. And we have a nature's claim to hit, for example, uh, uh, turn one Urza Saga. We can get an amulet. But outside of that, our hand is pretty bad. I think I'm going to mulligan. Okay. I think this hand is better. Yes, this is better. We have to ditch this Archon. So if we draw Persist immediately, punish. But I think the Inquisition on the play is just going to be better. I'm going to fetch Shock. We don't have... Well, I have no choice if I want Inquisition on turn one. But I don't really think our life total is that relevant very early. So a bunch of Explorers and an Endurance and a Summoner's Pact. They already have one of their force in their hand. Hmm. That's tough. So I'm considering either the Endurance or the Summoner's Pact. Um, endurance stops our Beseju plan. Summoner's Pact advances their own game plan. Yeah, you know, I'll take the Summoner's Pack. I'll take the Summoner's Pack. It, that just makes sense to me. I have a creativity in my hand. So if they want to stop my Ren and Six, uh, that's just going to have to be totally okay. Like, uh, more, more power to them. That doesn't actually help them win the game, and they're going to need a lot of mana, so they would have to pitch and explore to make the Endurance work. I mean, they can just wait till turn three, but I, I truly think it'll be too late by then. Okay. So that's a two for one. My Ren and Six turns back online as soon as I draw uh, another fetch land. I'm going to blow that up into Viseju for sure. Perfect. Next turn, I'll creativity if I draw a fetch land. Okay. Nature's claim. Okay. So I'm going to claim this. And I believe they'll be running out of forest here soon. So I should be able to s start strip mining them. So I might just do that. I'm going to land away from being able to creativity. So I can just try to draw that normally. I don't have to like bitter reunion. Uh, I can try to bitter reunion next turn if I don't draw a land with whatever I draw to hit a natural land. But I want to I want to besage you if I can. Get five mana. Okay. So I did draw it. They could have, oh, you know, I might have made another mistake. They could have Dramatic Reversal. That costs five mana. I always think of them needing to have six mana, but they have the Dramatic Reversal. Hmm. You know, I think it changes nothing for me. I think I just, you know, keep on keeping on. Like, if they manage to assemble a kill from here... That's fine. Okay, nice. 
I wonder how many uh, dramatic reversals this deck is playing. I'd be curious to know that. Everything looks fine to me. Um, I'm just going to submit. And hopefully we can get a really fast draw on the, uh, on the draw. I might mulligan this game somewhat aggressively. Like, I, I tend to keep a, a lot of hands, but I won't keep something that's super medium. Like, this hand is not medium. Um, so I'm going to keep it. I get the Inquisition and Bitter Reunion if I draw my Persist. I'm, I'm in there. Okay. Double Dramatic Entrance and Explore. What can they do with this hand? So they can Transmute for, well, the, they would need another blue mana. But they can eventually transmute for their Summoner's Pact. That gets them uh, Primeval Titan or Atraxa or something. So, okay. Well, that makes my second Inquisition pretty dead, but I think that's okay. Like, I'm going to see a lot of cards with this hand. So, if their draw ends up being kind of clunky, I would say that's probably overall pretty good for me because uh, I'm, I'm just going to go bitter into Fable and just see a whole bunch of cards. This is kind of why I was questioning, you know, having the seven bitter reunion effects but not having four persist because uh, obviously I'm playing a game where I really, I really just want to draw the persist. Like this would be a turn three hasted Archon, which here it is. So the real question is, the real question is, is I can haste an Archon or I can Inquisition. If I Inquisition, I can strip away a Endurance if they drew it. Of course, I think they would have had to draw like Endurance green card because they don't even have double green. They can't cast it. Ugh. But if they do have Endurance plus green card, it's pretty bad for me. If I just Inquisition, there is a chance that they don't go for that play if they have it and then I get the Persist it. I think I'm playing for the 5-0, and I'm just going to – I'm going to fetch first. I'm playing for the 5-0. I'm just going to go for it. Just, you know, we'll just get lucky. It's cool. We don't have to worry about it too much. Perfect. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That was a reason to, to look. Oh, I don't think I've ever gotten Orvard out of this. Well, yeah, I've never gotten Orvard from a Titan deck, but I guess at the same time, they're also, like, not a Titan deck. Like, they're a dramatic reversal deck. I'm in really bad shape. Oh, no. It's weird. It's weird to me that they waited. It's really strange to me that they waited. Why didn't they just do it on the first one? I wonder why they let me attack like that. Huh. Okay. So, I'm going to lead on this. Uh, I think 
the time for necromantia has passed. Yeah, it's looking like we're dead. All right, GG opponent. All right, guys, we got a respectable 4-1, uh, and uh, I'm going to do a little my thoughts on the deck in here in a second. Uh, so if y'all wanted to join me there, you could. Uh, yeah, I got some thoughts on the deck, so we're, we're going to do that here in a second. All right, so what are my thoughts on this deck? Um, my first initial thought is this card. Uh, Rin and Realm Breaker was just not very good. I drew it plenty of times over the course of the league. It just never seemed impactful enough, you know? It, it, there was never, like, a spot where the, the Hexproof 3-3 was just the line that I needed to resolve a creativity, you know? This deck already has plenty of ways to make treasures and tokens, and it's got Inquisition to see if, you know if there's even removal to be played around. And, you know, as far as a fair card goes, you know, it doesn't even strike me as that good. Like, I do like the 3-3. Three, three. I think if you're in a weird game where you've lost your Archons to a Mind Stone, or not a Mind Stone, but a Stone Brain, you know, just having the extra threat, <coughs> it could be relevant. It's just... My big problem is this minus two almost doesn't do anything. Like, it's minus two, maybe get a land, you know? Maybe you, you get lucky and hit a Ren in six. Maybe you hit a Bitter Reunion or an Invasion. But that's just, I don't know. For, for three mana, that just doesn't seem very strong. Like, this could be uh, another Persist or uh, another Fatal Push. Something of that nature. Or it could be like a fifth a fifth Thought Seize, right? Four Inquisition, one Thought Seize. Like, I like the Inquisition over Thought Seize because, you know, you have to fetch Shock and then Thought Seize. That's, that's a lot of damage. Like, this, this deck is already kind of painful between fetching all the time because you're, you're rebuying fetch lands with Ren and Six and just having the Shock land mana base in the, in the first place. You know, you have one basic mountain, no Swamp. So, but I think you could afford one Thought Seize or, you know, just a... You could play the fourth bolt, you know, die to Ragavan less often. You know, whatever. I just don't like this card. Uh, as far as the the seven Bitter Reunion effects, I still think Bitter Reunion is the stronger card. Uh, it, just, it just plays better with what this deck is trying to do, right? What am I trying to do? Well, I'm trying to put a Fatty Boom Boom in the graveyard persist it back into play, you know, haste. So I think the four bitter reunion, definitely correct. Uh, it just is more in line with the game one plan, uh, the the main plan, plan A, right? But I do like the redundancy that this card gives you. I like that it does both things, right? Like it's just a worse bitter reunion, you know, discard a card, draw a card. You know, it does, doesn't go deep. It just puts a card in the graveyard and replaces that one card. I do I like how it makes you the treasure, you know. Uh, so you can ditch your Archon and make a treasure for your creativity. Speeds you up a little bit. But I also like how it, it never came up in our league. But I did play a one game from the last league I played with this deck where I was able to flip two of these. Uh, I was able to flip this. And on the back side, you can go get another battle. So I was immediately able to go get another one and flip that one too. And I just played a weird fair game with Fable the Mirror Breaker and Invasions where I just beat my opponent down. Uh, something else that I think this deck is really, really strong at is with all of these bitter reunion effects, all of the looters, Rin and Six is very powerful in this deck. Like, I know, kind of a shocking revelation, but... Being able to discard your lands and then immediately pick them back up is just turns your kind of weird card selection into actual card advantage. That's what I really like about having all of these right here. Um, 
something that I would be interested in trying in this kind of shell is going a little bit deeper on the persist, right? Add the fourth per persist, cut the creativities, and then play a fairer game plan where you have maybe furies, you have maybe endurances, and you you try to grind out your opponents with this quasi fair game plan and the card advantage that's provided to you from Rin and Six and your looter effects. That's something I'd be interested in trying. You guys uh, let me know if that's something that you'll want to see. That's kind of my immediate impression of what direction you could go with this deck. If you don't want to go in that direction, I definitely think if you were to pick up this deck, you should add the fourth persist at the very least. I don't really care if you want to try the Rin and Realm Breaker. I think it's not great. But the fourth persist, that's that has to be necessary. I think I'm actually pretty happy with the seven. I was unsure if seven was okay. I think it's fine. As far as as far as the sideboard goes, um, you know the the creativity sideboards. There's a lot of different cards you could play, right? You know, there's some that you always expect to see. You always expect to see Veil of Summer. You always expect to see you know Viseju. Um, you know, Necromancia is kind of specific to Jund, but, you know, there's a lot of different cards you can play, even in just the Jund colors, that would be fine to play. Uh, but I think I think this sideboard configuration is fine. I wouldn't blame you for cutting these Brotherhood ins. Uh, you know, maybe playing a second hit of Sugu and then like an Abrade, something like that. There's a whole bunch of, it's it's a, it's got a really deep sideboard. Uh, creativity so that's that's more or less preference uh, i thought this specific sideboard was fine uh so yeah i mean it's a strong deck i played it through two leagues went four one twice gotta almost got that five oh that was that was a pretty close game we played there uh maybe i could have played it a little bit better i don't know if it would have mattered but i definitely could have played it better um yeah deck is strong um I'll probably play it again in the future. Uh, you guys let me know if y'all wanted to see what other deck you might want to see or if you felt like you seen me make a mistake or I'm actually pretty new to the YouTube game. So if you have any tips on editing or kind of how my video was, I would ap appreciate that. Um, of course, like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.